Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. April is Financial Literacy Month, and that's our focus all this month on the Better Business, Better Series podcast. We're talking to leaders in business planning and development about how you can best position your small business for success, and also thinking about long-term goals. And yes, that means retirement. May seem like it's a long way down the road, but we got to think about it. Today, I'd like to welcome Stuart Robertson, president of Capital One's Advisors 401k Services. Stuart, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you doing, Well, I'm good. Thanks for joining us. So, as I mentioned there, we'd like to spend some time talking about what small business owners can do when they start thinking about retirement. But first, let's begin uh, sort of with a general overview of the financial challenges that pretty much anyone faces as they start to get a business off the ground. So, no matter how much of an investment you're making, what are the sort of the key areas you can't ignore when you're trying to launch a business? Yeah, you know, when you're getting up and started launching a business, you got lots of things to to take care of. You need to make sure you you know you have access to credit because you're likely going to be you know defunding your business and making sure you've got inventory or whatever you need to keep your business running. You're going to need some key employees. You're going to you know really need to focus on you know getting all those financial things set up so you can run your business and focus on your customers and your product. And Stuart, so let's then get back to the matter at hand here. Why should a small business, and this may seem obvious to some, but maybe not to others, why should a small business set up a 401k? Well, you know, actually, I even want to step up back a second. I mean, there are, so, so folks have perspective, there are, are about 535,000 401k plans in the United States, and there are about 28 million small businesses. So when you talk about the third or more Americans who don't have, have access to a retirement plan, it's because they're working for a small business. And, um, you know, there's a lot of things a small business might be thinking about, but, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to sell my business down the road or I'll make it money and I'll make it, it up later. But, um, you know, steady saving and, and offering a low-cost 401k plan can, can not only hedge that bet but help you get there along the way and, and help your employees also. So those are some of the you know, key things. They don't need to be expensive. They can be easy to run and um, can help you get some great employees, too. But when you, So when you look at those numbers, though, a, a huge number of Americans just simply don't have a retirement plan because they're not working for uh, a, maybe a bigger company that, that has that in place. Yeah. So if you, if, once, you, once there's 500 employees in a business, there's about a 99% chance they have a 401k plan, right? But when you get under 100 employees, it drops down to 13 to 16%, depending on the research you're looking at. So it's really lacking in the, in the small business offering a plan. And do you find that those smaller companies under 100, they're being pressured, they, they know that their employees want that 401k, and they've just got way too much to think about, way too much overhead? Uh, or is it sort of just not top of mind as, as people get going with a smaller business? Well, there's lots of things, obviously, weighing on that, that small business, but a lot of it is misperception. Um, you know, they may have perceptions from working at a business that, that had one at one time before they jumped off on their own, but that's really their only exposure to it. And when we go out and talk to small businesses and field our research, you know, the number one thing that they'll, they'll say is, you know, I don't have enough employees to even have a plan, um, or I'm self-employed and I can't have a plan. And the, the fact of the matter is that they are designed at any size business, whether you're self-employed or have employees, can actually have a plan. So you have those things facing them. A lot of them think they need to afford a match, uh, which a match is not required in a 401k plan. So there's just a lot of misperception um, that can really prevent them from even looking into it. And yeah, are they busy figuring out their small business and wearing multiple hats? Absolutely. So you have time, and I can do it next year, you know, facing them as well as these misperceptions, which is one big reason that drives down the adoption in, in, the, in, the, in that marketplace. So when we talk about a small business, like a really small business, you're, you're employing maybe just a handful of people working out of your house or an office. That, in that case, you, you can still look into this and pursue it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there, there's providers like us with Spark 401k that, that focus you know, right on that market and helping them have a low cost, easy one to manage online. And you mentioned along the same lines, if you're self-employed, you know, no reason why you shouldn't get yourself a 401k and pay yourself. Correct. Yeah. So, you, you know, the, you know, it's called the solo 401k in the industry or individual 401k, and you're both the employer and the employee. So you can both, you know, contribute up to the $18,000 max and you can do profit sharing uh, to yourself of up to 54000 in total between the two. So it's, 
you know, if you're doing really well as a self-employed person, it can be a great way to save for retirement and save on taxes too. So in that case, you can certainly provide a match for yourself, I guess, if you want, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, they, they usually look at a profit share. Many, many will wait till the end of the year, understand their, uh, you know, their income situation and their tax needs, and and give themselves a one-time profit share to their business. Okay. So uh, if someone listening is a small business owner, they want to make sure they're getting the best deal on their 401k. What advice can you give? Yeah, you, know, you know, do some research. It's pretty due online. Um, see who's out there, and you know, just some some benchmarks that that I will tell. Uh, any small business owner to think about is to be aware of what are the investment expenses. So there's often a one-time setup charge. There's often a monthly or quarterly administration charge they might pay. But the rest often is kind of folded into what are you paying on investment. So the fund expenses um, are often higher for a small business. The asset management fee a company might charge might be high. The there's other fees in there, but you want to understand what those all-in expenses are, because as you save, every dollar you're paying in investment expenses is one less dollar invested in the market, and even a one percent difference can mean hundreds of thousands of dollars over a forty-year career of, of of costing you in retirement savings. So. We always say make sure all those things are less than 1% and you're going to be uh, you know, having a very competitive plan. Okay. So it doesn't really have to be a whole lot. No. Okay. And and along the way, I, I wanted to ask, is it, and I don't think you covered this, is it a legal requirement then? So for a large business, is it a re- legal requirement or, or then obviously not for smaller businesses? No, there, there is no legal requirement to, to offer a plan. Um, it's just really... You know, once you get larger, it's an expected benefit. Um, you know, most have moved to 401k. There are still some defined benefits or pension plans out there. But, um, no, it, it's really just almost an expectation of once you're at a certain size. And, again, as people probably are getting more and more familiar with the idea of 401ks, which is I don't even know how long they've been around, but you hear about it a lot. Employees, I would imagine, looking at a small business and a career or job are, are asking about it. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I think what we hear small businesses say, owners say, is that, you know, oftentimes, um, you know, there's a life event for one of their their key talented associates, and that associate cares a lot more about benefits than they did before. So they had a child, or they got married, and and they're thinking about the future more. So um, that can be a real reason that some small businesses start start up the plan because they want to make sure they're taking care of their folks, or it's got more competitive in the market. All those things are additional drivers in helping folks look into it. Okay. And what else can a small business owner do to make sure they are uh, proactively planning for retirement, either for themselves or for their employees? You know, it's really what what we try to help every, um, you know, owners and associates alike think about is, you know, the number one question participants have when they're, they're starting a plan is how much should I be saving for retirement? And most experts are going to say, you know, 10 to 15 percent of your salary over over your career. So um, no matter if you're offering a 401k plan or not, you know, how are you able to set aside money ongoing um, for down the road? And that could be in an IRA or it could be, you know, an outside investing account, whatever makes sense. But you definitely want to make sure you're you're thinking about putting away um some money and, and build into it if you if you can't do that right away. You know, every time you get a raise, do an extra one percent, whatever makes sense to get you on the on the road so that you have what you need come retirement. It's never too early and probably never too late, right? No, no, it, it, and that's an important point for folks to know too. Is because we we hear some participants who who are older and like I can't really make a difference now. I'm gonna have to work forever, and they may not want to work forever, right? So or may not be able to, but. You know, the, the laws are set up to help people catch up. Um, it doesn't mean you can catch all the way up because uh, there definitely are advantages of compounding by starting young. But, you know, for the 401k plan, once you're 50, instead of that limit being $18,000 a year, you have a 6000 catch up. So you can, you can put 24000 away, which is a fair amount of, of money if you can afford to. So uh, e- even the IRA has an extra 1000 you can put in. So there are there are mechanisms to help you save more in a tax-protected manner. And, well, and really, I, I, I don't know, anecdotally or data or research shows that, I mean, I guess the, the biggest uh, negative I- impact is that somebody's just going to be working longer, right, if they don't have that retirement money set, sitting there. Yeah, that, that's, you know, you, you've got, that's exactly what folks are worried about, that, you know, uh, that they're going to be working longer, 
um, and, and and hopefully they can, or they're going to need help for family members, or you know they're hopeful that Social Security will be there for them. And you know hope, hope isn't the greatest plan, so you, you want to be as proactive as you can. There are loans for many things in this world: cars, houses, et cetera. But there is no loan for retirement. So being proactive and trying to find a way to put money away is, is important. And where can people go to learn more about uh, how, how you guys help folks out and, and businesses with 401ks? Yeah, so uh, we have a great site, spark401k.com, which you know has all the, the good basics on, uh, on the 401k plans and, and our offering and how we help folks get started. Um, we have small business experts who will even tell you if it's not time for your, your business to start a plan. Um, they really want you to you know, do what's right for your firm. So um, all those things can help. And, what, and actually, one final question, Stuart. If someone is uh, and more perhaps on the employee side, if someone's leaving a small business, maybe going to another, is there anything they have to think about when they are signing up for a, a contract with the company and how they might be able to shift that 401k down the road? Yeah, so if, if you have a, an old 401k from another employer um, and you're starting up with a, a new one, you, you're going to want to – that's one thing you as an associate may just want to understand is what are the expenses in these two different 401k plans? Because it can be a lot easier to manage your, um, you know, your retirement plan from, from one, one plan versus going across companies and because lots of people don't have time to do that. So consolidating can make sense, but if you're moving to a more expensive plan, I wouldn't recommend it. You might consider keeping where it is or moving it to an IRA if that's lower cost. But really thinking about the cost and investment options uh, and taking that you know, extra 30 minutes, whatever it might take to figure that out is definitely worth your while because you don't want that cost drag on it and you want to make sure you have the right uh, uh, funds and, and that you want to be invested in. Okay. That's great advice. Thanks for thanks for your time and, and your tips on planning ahead for, for retirement with small businesses and for their employees. Appreciate it, Stuart. You bet. My pleasure. All right, I'd like to thank Stuart Robertson, president of Capital One's Advisors 401k Services. If you'd like to learn more about the Better Business Bureau and Financial Literacy Month, visit us at betterbusinessbureau.org. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.